Hello, I'm Sue Romna from Edison Group. Today, I have the pleasure to catch up with Mendez. Mendez is a European clinical stage immuno-oncology company. Welcome, Eric. Hi, right, Sue. Good to see you. Great. Nice to see you. Um, I know there's been a lot of activity, so it'd be really helpful if you could give us a recap of the ongoing cadence combination trial, how that's progressing. And I assume that there's been preparatory activities for the global registration trial. Sure. Let me start with uh, where we currently stand with the Vitadent cell program. Uh, as you know, it's a maintenance therapy for AML, and it means that it has to be safe and it has to deliver durable clinical effect. Now, we had seen long-term survival in the majority of patients out of the ongoing ADVANCE-2 trial, which is a monotherapy trial. And uh, what was interesting in the past quarters, in the second quarter, is we reported at different conferences so-called immunomonitoring data. So we looked into the immunological responses that we were able to observe in the patients that were treated with Fidedensel, and they basically delivered the proof of concept that this is an active immunotherapy. And what that means is that uh, we saw responses related to T cells, but also to B cells, so broad immune responses. And those patients with good responses also were all in the long-term survival curve. So that's a very important step in the development of the program that we basically see in these data, the confirmation that the dance cell acts as an active immunotherapy, meaning it stimulates the immune system to result in long-term control over residual disease. So that was an important step. That also gives us additional confidence to move forward and expand the clinical development of the dance cell. The CADENCE trial you referred to, it's officially called AMLM22 CADENCE, is a trial we do together with the Oscillation Leukemia and Lymphoma Group. At the beginning of the year in March, we obtained ethics committee approval. So that also was the trigger for us to start the trial. So what we have been doing in the past months in the second quarter is to make sure everything is ready to start a trial. We shipped the clinical trial materials or the Vitadensal to Australia. Uh, we have been working with ALLG to align up to nine clinical centers that want to participate in the first stage of the trial. And we've also been uh, engaged in, uh, let's say, the, the interaction with the hospitals to make sure that they are in a position to start the trial. The result is that uh, the first hospitals will open in September for recruitment, and then we aim to uh, also open up the other centers as much as possible before the year end. So that's the actual start of the trial. With respect to the global registration trial, uh, it's a parallel exercise. So with what we currently have at hand, we think we have enough to take a final step towards late stage development and in the end market registration of the product. So what do we do? To, what do we need to do for that? Uh, on the one hand, we will prepare uh, the protocol for the trial. So we're working on a registration trial protocol. It means we are working out the details, but also that we're seeking confirmation with the regulatory agencies, the EMA and the FDA, that we're on the right track and what we need to take into consideration in designing such a trial. So that's an important exercise, which is going on as we speak in the background. Um, but also the manufacturing part is a very important element of it. So we need large-scale manufacturing to be able to enter into late stage development and commercialization of the products. And we are well on track with that exercise. So we have an alliance with a company called Nortec Biologics, which are uh, based in Sweden. And what we have established initially was the manufacturing facility. And now we have engaged in the initial large scale runs. They were completed successfully in the second quarter. But to push that through and make sure that we have everything set up for what's called GMP manufacturing, right? So the manufacturing you need to treat patients uh, that will take up till uh, mid next year when we will uh, be able to uh, manufacture the initial GMP batches at Northex, which is also an important pillar on that late stage development strategy. Uh, that is what we call pivotal stage readiness. And we want that program to be ready for that phase. And then the next step will be how are we going to engage in such a registration trial process? Are we going to do it by ourselves? Are we going to do it in the partnership or a combination of both? And with, right now, we are fully focused on preparing the program to reach that stage. Switching gears, I think it might be helpful to get a recap of the, the top-level description of Elixidensel's mechanism of action. Yeah, so Elixidensel is a different product. Uh, Vitidensel is cell line-based. That's also why we are moving now towards large-scale manufacturing. Elixidensel is derived from donor material, uh, and we inject the product uh, into tumors. So it's a specific product that is uh, aiming to involve the immune system to fight tumors that are typically 
not so receptive to respond to the immune system. And that is something which we have explored in the past, both preclinically, but also in a series of clinical trials. One thing we've learned, and that is, uh, I think, for the broader field, an essential uh, element to take into consideration, is that you have tumors that respond to a new class of drugs called immune checkpoint inhibitors. And those tumors generate some immunity in patients. And the patients that are uh, lucky enough, I would say, to have that pre-existing immunity, they benefit from the checkpoint inhibitors. That's a very potent concept. And that's also the basis, for example, for Keytruda or Pembrolizumab to become such a successful drug in a wide range of solid tumors. What has not worked is to improve on the checkpoint inhibitors by adding other immunotherapy approaches. And that's a quite dramatic conclusion out of a lot of clinical trials that have taken place in the past years. And also initially we were focused on that area. So we were running a combination trial, for example, with checkpoint inhibitor. At a certain point, we decided we needed to change course. Mm -hmm. So we are now looking for tumors that are not susceptible to the immune system and at least not responding to current available checkpoint inhibitors. And that's an interesting concept to see if we can now guide the immune system towards tumors that are generally unresponsive and make them more responsive. That's the concept of an accidental. So, yeah, that, that's interesting. I mean, congratulations. You you actually uh, announced an, uh, a collaboration with the uh, Begonia Institute. That That's very exciting. Maybe you can give us a little background on the collaboration and the decision to join the combination trial. Yes, I think the uh, Institut Bergonier, for people who don't know it, it's one of the leading cancer centers in Europe. Uh, it's, a, it's a French center, but they coordinate large clinical trials also with other centers. So also in this case, the Regomune trial is a very big trial. It's recruiting up to 475 patients. It's for advanced or metastatic tumors in a very broad sense. And it combines regorafenib, uh, which is a, a, a drug by Bayer, with Avedimab, which is a, uh, a drug developed by Merck. And they are both supporting the trial by supplying the drug. We have been able to talk with Institut Bergonier around the soft tissue sarcoma group of patients, which they are uh, including in the trial. And we will add the Lixodem cell to the combination of regorafenib uh, and Avedimab. And that's going to be an interesting collaboration with Institut Bergonier, but also with the other centers participating in the trial. And that is uh, a group of seven large leading French uh, cancer research centers, including, for example, also uh, Institut Curie uh, and Gustave Roussy. So there's a, there's a broader group of hospitals involved. So this is a, a, a very excellent group of centers to work with. And also, we think this trial and specifically this indication, so the soft tissue sarcomas are a group of tumors uh, that develop in, in the soft tissues that includes also the skin and the muscles. So they're also from an administration perspective, a logical group of tumors to pursue with the cell. cell. But if we can show that these tumors become more susceptible to the combination of regorafenib and Avedimab by adding an Lixodan cell, I think that puts us in a very strong position uh, to continue to develop the program. Yeah, this combination trial is super interesting, right? I mean, um, I, I think there's a lot of preclinical data that's backing this. And then maybe also, could you give us an idea of um, the context to why STS was selected as the target indication? Yeah, it was a combination too, of what I just described. So on the one hand, uh, we decided uh, already as a basic principle some time ago that we wanted to pursue tumors that are not responsive to already approved immune checkpoint inhibitors. And there's not so many, but that group of tumors really requires uh, something new to hopefully unleash the immune system against those tumors. And that's where Elixodensa can make the difference. So instead of looking for tumors that are already being treated with checkpoint inhibitors, which is what we did in the past, for example, with the ILIA trial, we now look for tumors that are um, not yet approved to be treated by immune checkpoint inhibitors because they are generally unresponsive. That's a very different setting. And there's only a limited group of tumors that are in that category. And for the rest, yeah, we took into account, like I said, is it uh, a group of tumors that can be treated through intertumoral injection? Uh, but also, for example, other elements, like, for example, the competitive landscape, right? You want to be able to, to run a trial uh, and not be frustrated by lots of other drugs being tested in the same indication, which will prevent you from recruiting patients. So it was a combination of 
let's say the indication, the opportunity, the basic principles we want to establish, but of course also the opportunity now to work with such a great group of uh, of clinical centers. Yeah, so that makes sense. How how about um, uh, covering off some of like the key milestones and catalysts that investors should look for in the next 12 to 18 months? Yeah, so I think uh, everything which is ongoing will deliver potential milestones and upside, but the most important ones and also the most imminent ones are, first of all, ongoing uh, advanced two trial. Patients are still in a long-term follow-up, and we will uh, provide an update in the fourth quarter of this year. Uh, we're very happy that the preparations from the Cadence trial have been so fruitful so that we're able to start that trial and opening up the first centers uh, in September. Then we have the primary readout of the Allison trial, which is the ovarian cancer trial that will be based on the complete uh, uh, immunomonitoring of all the patients treated. So that's something to look forward to. And then, of course, there's a lot of stuff going on in the background. So we are preparing the, the Regamine trial, the trial we just discussed with Institut Bergonier for the Xadan cell. So we will help the centers uh, get up to speed to, uh, to start working with our product. Uh, we have the ongoing collaboration with uh, NorthX, our manufacturer in Sweden. So it's very important that also that uh, delivers good progress so that we are in a position to do large-scale manufacturing in the course of next year. And that's the kind of thing that is very important for the company and that we will keep the market up to date on. So uh, I think that's the main, the main progress to be expected to in the short term. Yeah, thank you, Eric, for the update. That's super helpful. Thank you all for joining us here today. If you'd like to learn more about Mendez, please refer to edisongroup.com. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Thanks.